This is the SPL Express. I'm Abhishek Ravikrishna, joined by Rich Roshan Rai, and we're here to look forward to another exciting weekend of action in the Singapore Premier League. But first, let's run through the results of what's happened in match week 12. It started off with a bang last weekend. Tampines Rovers and Geelang International in the Eastern Derby. It was the Stags who ran out 2-0 winners in that one. Tajapaka also picked up three points up against the Young Lions. And on Sunday, the Lion City Sailors and Albrecht's Nigata, they ran riot in their games. The Sailors beating Ballastia Kalsa six goals to one, while Albrecht's beat Haugang five goals to nil. And the midweek game saw Geelang International squander a two-goal advantage as the Young Lions picked up an important point. So here's how that translates to the standings. Lion City Sailors with a commanding six-point lead at the top of the table. Albrecht's Nigata and Tanjong Paga are level on 22 points. Tanjong Paga having played a game more. Tampines Rovers four points behind Tanjong Paga currently. Meanwhile, in the lower half of the standings, Young Lions remain rooted to the bottom with four points, but they do have games in hand. And here's what to look forward to for this weekend. The big one, Sailors play Albrecht's Nigata on Friday. And Saturday, Young Lions take on Ballester Kalsa, a game which could be instrumental in what goes on at the bottom half of the table. Sunday sees Geelang International host Tanjong Paga United. And next week's midweek games, the Sailors host Young Lions. So let's talk about the game that could decide who runs away with the title. Sailors up against Albrecht's Nagata. Let's uh, focus on the Lion City Sailors first. Seven game win streak. It's a club record for them. <laughs> they are in good form right now, Roshan. Yeah, yeah incredible form. And. Uh... You know, I, I don't think you're exaggerating too much when you say who could run away with the title. Sailors going into their six-point lead. If they win this one, they go nine points clear. And, you know, the way they've been looking and the form that they're in at the moment, they're scoring all sorts of goals and they're looking like they're getting into that rhythm, um, playing some really good football, high-quality players. It's such a massive game and it's one I'm really looking forward to because I think on the tactical front, this is going to be such a fascinating contest between two very, very good coaches and two very good sides. So this is, for me, the game to, to really look forward to ahead of the weekend. We've spoken about them hitting their peak performance. Do you think that they're reaching those levels right now? I think they, they are, but we, we've said this before about them where you know they've looked good one weekend and then the next they sort of have struggled a little bit. So with seven matches that they've won in a row now it's kind of difficult to sort of be critical in any way shape or form about the the Lion City Sailors I know that coach Kim Do Hoon was a bit critical of them a few weeks ago when he said you know he wasn't quite seeing that desire and that attitude to want to improve and want to you know get better uh, with each and every um, uh, match week so uh, I mean listen they are by far the best side in the league they have that quality but I think in in Elbrex, they will come up against a team who are able to sort of match the um, the quality that the Lancity Sailors are able to put out. Let's talk about a player who's very uh, important to the Sailors mm. and a player who's not spoken much about, Shannon Sulaiman. He scored a couple of wonderful goals over the weekend. Yeah. And and what that what is so impressive about him because a lot of coaches seem to favour Shadan. He's an integral part of the national team as well. Exactly that. It's, it's another point I was going to bring up. He's such an important player on the international stage and you know he's just so cool and composed in possession and that always helps um, especially when there are sides who uh, like to have control of the ball. He's a key part of that. He's, a, he, he, he's that link man in midfield and he's that player who can sort of put it all together uh, for the Sailors and for the Singapore national team and the fact that you know he's at whatever age he is now at 33 34 I think that he's still an integral part of the, the national side says it all adding uh, uh, goals to his game we saw his wonderful technique and we saw evidence of that in those goals that he scored against Ballester but more importantly it's not just about the goal scoring numbers and the assist numbers it's again just how how important he is in terms of holding that team together structurally uh, in, in the possession phases of play as well because of his vision his technique to execute a pass uh, and, and he helps open up the pitch uh, for his side and helps with those diagonal switches as well when they want to Lan City Sailors for example want to exploit space on the far side with Lestian and they want to isolate Lestian up one-on-one -on -one against an opposition defender he's got that passing range to do that now let's uh, talk about Elbrex they are in form as well four wins in a row the last time these two guys, uh, two sides met, it ended up in a one-all draw. <laughs> but what, how do you see Albrex approaching this one? You know, I think uh, the Sailors were actually pretty fortunate to come away with a, with a draw in that game. Albrex had, had plenty of chances to, to really kill off that tie and didn't take it. And Albrex now, I think they've only lost um, on match day one, on their first match of the season. Since then, they've been unbeaten as well. There was that frustrating spell of that f those four draws. But again, we talk about rhythm and momentum, and they again look like a side who are starting to come into it. And that's because they had a disrupted preseason. 
Uh, now they've had opportunities to actually work together a lot as a team and that international break as well would have done them a world of good. We saw them leave with an 8-2 uh, hammering of, of Geylang. They came back and they absolutely destroyed Haogang as well by five goals to nil. They are looking like a, a machine that's purring at the moment. Consistency in the team in terms of the starting lineups. Players are very familiar with what's required of them uh, and what the coach wants out of them. But also the fitness levels and the attitude and the desire that they showed. I mean, absolutely incredible. They were five goals up against Haogang and they still kept pressing, they still kept chasing. They just want more. Uh, let's talk about a player who's coming into some form with Elbrex, a, a new boy for them. You could say Ilan Fandi. He's yeah. a top goal scorer, a uh, local goal scorer mm. we have right now. Yeah. Uh, do you see him breaking into the first eleven and, and actually making a, a name for himself? Making a name for himself rather. At, at, at yeah, I think what what they have to sort of just be careful a little bit with uh, with Ilhan is uh, the fitness levels because we know he's had a few injury issues, a few growing pains. Uh, but he's a player that certainly has incredible quality. And I think he, he helps. Uh, Alberic so much with his style of play and his intelligence because he sees passes uh, in attacking areas he sees openings and opportunities and he brings others into play as well so I think it's just now about sort of managing his his fitness levels and his game time but you're starting to see him getting more and more minutes um, and and I know for a fact that the, that people at Alberic are really impressed with Ilhan and his qualities um, so it's, it's going to be fascinating. I mean, it's good for Singapore football that, you know, you don't just have Ilhan in there, but Zamani as well, who I think has been contributing, uh, you know, and then Nicky Melvin Singh um, um, playing his part as well in this in this Alberic side. So it's good that there are Singaporean players exposed to that level of training, um, that level of discipline, and, and I think it just bodes well for, for the future, and it's a good move for, for Ilhan. Uh, quick prediction on this game. Wow, you know, I, it's been always been so close and so tight between these two sides, and I... I I feel like leaning towards an, an Alberex win here, but you know, don't count the Lion City Sailors out. So I think I'm going to settle eventually for, for a 2 all draw. So that's an important clash at the top half of the table. Let's talk about a matchup that's going to be important in the bottom half of the table. Young Lions up against Ballastia. Young Lions coming into this one of the high of what happened at our <laughs> Tampines Hub, Russia. Yeah, I mean, to, to come from two goals down in a match that I think if Geylang had actually taken the opportunities, they should have lost. Um, but credit to them, you know, this young side who, who they never give up and they keep going all the way through and they were able to find the goals. And uh, I think it was an important, such an important point for them. You know, pre-match, prior to that game, Nazri was uh, talking about how he was struggling to sort of put a team together because there were players missing out through illness or injury in summer um, in training with the under-19s so who are going to be taking part in the AFF Championships. So there are all these disruptions and the fact that the, the Young Lions as well have had a very busy calendar. They've had SEA Games, uh, they've had what, AFF Under-23 Championships earlier in the season. So it, it's not been very smooth for them in terms of the preparation uh, going into matches this campaign or going into the season. So there's a lot of catching up for them to do. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they should be going into this with some good confidence and maybe uh, they'll, have some, they'll have some players that have, that have come back from illness and injury to try and boost the side. We talk about the side right now and, and I want to get your insight on the mentality and the, the psychology behind it. Having such a thin squad as a player how, or as a, as a coaching staff rather, how do you lift your team for knowing that sometimes the odds are stacked against you? Well, well, it is tough. It is tough, right? It doesn't give, you know, with the young Lions, it doesn't give them too much of an opportunity to make those changes. We saw the fact that they only had three players, uh, three outfield players on the bench against uh, against Geylang. So they didn't really, Nazri didn't really have too much to sort of play with. But it's, it's a motivational tool in that sense that you've now got an opportunity for some players who are perhaps on the fringes. I mean, I think Noor Hakim came in and had a really good game for them. He looked lively up front. There's a chance now for Abdul Razak. Uh, up front to, to try and get the goals for them. So there are opportunities for players coming in and that's how you sort of uh, use that to say, you know, this is your chance now. Step in, show us what you can do, step up to the plate and, and deliver. So, so in terms of motivation, you should say players should be motivated anyway, but these are additional things that you sort of tack on to it. Um, and, and it gets younger players some game time now that they perhaps maybe wouldn't have gotten um, with, with the likes of Ilhan, the likes of um, perhaps Zamani or Zulkarnain in the side previously. Well, this could be a perfect opportunity for them because they face a Balassia side who are really, really struggling. And it was highlighted by the head coach, Agba Nawaz. It's a crushing defeat. Definitely, it's a disappointing result in terms of result. But performance in terms of how the way we play, we are trying. But if the way we defend, we don't deserve to win any game. If we defend like this, we play school games also don't deserve to win. Some very strong comments from Ballester head coach Akbar Nawaz there. 
Ballester, 35 goals conceded in 12 games. They're really, really <laughs> struggling, aren't they? <laughs> well, he said it, right? So we can now, right? He's, he's, he's opened the door to it. No, but I mean, look, he's, he's just being realistic about it, Akbar. And I think everyone can see just how difficult uh, a season it's been for him to try and get this side organized defensively you know i think in attack we've spoken about the fact that you know they have the the japanese trio to to cause issues uh, up front but i mean defensively they they really are all over the place this balance side there's a lack of organization in their players uh, just going off and switching off in moments in games and you know I, it, it, it's just such a such a weird one because again it's a side that i think really needs to sort of go back to basics in a sense and just kind of focus on on doing the basic things right. Rusha, we talk about the basics, but yeah, these are experienced players. Del Winder is in yeah. there, Darren Tay, Ho Wai Loon, yeah. and now they brought in Madu as well. Yeah, I mean, look, when you when you look at that lineup, when you look at the team sheet, there are, as you mentioned quite rightly, uh, experienced players in there, but Madu hasn't played football for a while, so perhaps it's going to take some time for him to get adjusted to it, and, and maybe they haven't quite been able to sort of gel together as a defensive unit in that sense i feel like i'm trying to think up of excuses and, and reasons for why this is happening but again those could be valid reasons those could be valid sort of excuses the fact that they haven't had an opportunity to really work together as a defensive unit um but the, the evidence is is in the displays in the fact that you know that there's too much time and space for opposition attackers for opposition players to play those passes through their gaps uh, between the units in the side. So, big, big issues on the defensive front for Ballester to try and deal with. Let's focus on a game where one team has issues going forward. Gela up against Tanjong Paga. And Gela, they, they, they just, just can't score. They can't convert their chances. They, they lost to Tampines over the weekend in the Eastern Derby. And they struggled with the Young Lions as well. The game they should have killed off. Yes, yes, a game that they should have killed off. You say it, you, you say it quite rightly, and it's a perfect description of Geelong at times this season where there have been matches and there have been performances that I thought have been impressive, have been very good. Games that they haven't been able to really um, kill off and take their chances and take those opportunities and, and performances that have deserved better results than the ones that they've gotten so far. That's that's the way that the game is. Sounds like a cliche, but you know you <laughs> you don't you don't score, you don't win those matches, as I think uh, Michael Owen once said. Um, <laughs> so you know, with 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 no Ali, I can sense that frustration with this Geelong side as well, and the confidence is really gone from the team now, and that's the and that's the big thing with uh, with Geelong. You know, even Sime Zuzul and Bezukor, two of their uh, front players, the attacking players. Sime Zuzul as well at times, you know, he doesn't quite look like himself. He doesn't quite look like he's really enjoying himself. And, and how, how could you, right, with the way the side is struggling at the moment? Bezakor as well, I think I expect a bit more in terms of uh, increasing his goal scoring and his, and his assist numbers. So at least his goal scoring numbers. I think he had three one-on-one -on -one opportunities against Ridwan uh, in that match against the, uh, against the Young Lions that he couldn't put away. So they are creating chances. They are creating opportunities. They just aren't killing off the opposition and they aren't putting away those those chances uh, when they do get them and and because of that because the results are then going against them that confidence is really coming out of the side and that's very difficult to rebuild overall we've touched on this previously as well Geelang don't have a very strong squad so Noor Ali doesn't really have too many options to sort of work with and he's kind of relying on maybe 12 13 14 players at a stretch to to really carry the side through well they face a team who are who have a contrasting form, Tanjong Paga, yeah. who, who were in a very similar situation last year, actually, yep. to Geelang, but they've turned things around and they're still going strong. They are going strong and, and they're, they're doing brilliantly. And you remember that word confidence and I mentioned Geelang are lacking. Tanjong Paga have that in abundance. I mean, uh, what, four matches now that they're unbeaten, they've won their last three games and they're scoring goals as well and they're keeping things tight at the back. And this is a good run of games for them. And, and this match against Geelang is, is, a, is a game that they will want to go on and they will want to try and pick up three points because they do have tough games coming up in terms of the fixtures. I think they've got Lions with these Sailors and Elbrex to come. So back-to-back -back games against the league top two as it stands. Uh, but Tanjung Paga at, at, at that point, by that point, could find themselves in the, in the top two themselves. So, you know, credit to, to, to the work that Hasrin and his, his coaching staff have done at Tanjung Paga and the players who have responded to that as well. I mean, it's been an incredible effort so far. And I think a lot of us neutrals are hoping that it continues because it's so refreshing to see this side, um, you know, challenging in a, in a position that, you know, many wouldn't have expect them to be, expected them to be. So, you know, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And the big key difference as well is that they do have a lethal goal scorer and a big threat up front 
in Rio Nishiguchi. So that incredible quality that they have, they can focus a lot on making sure they're compact defensively and keeping their defensive structure and shape intact. And then a player in Nishiguchi who can essentially create chances on his own and finish off those opportunities. That's what's getting them the, the points. So that Geylang Tanjong Paga game is on Sunday, but our all eyes will be on the big one on Friday night. It's Lion City Sailors up against Albrex Nagata. Coverage begins at 7.15 p.m. So do join John Dykes and Rish Roshan Rai, who will be building up to all the action in a game that could be pivotal to the title race. So lots of football to look forward to. Do catch the action live on our YouTube channel. Till next time, goodbye.